Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome. Thanks, John. <laughs> Today, this is our second part to what we had posted a couple of days ago on how culture has started, def or culture is defining the church. And what I wanted to bring up for the second part, Pastor, is, you know, the this culture defining the church, has it brought the church to a place where the church is now it has plateaued and now beginning to decline because the influence of culture in the church? I think that the influence of sin in general, there's a, there's a war against truth, has really taken a toll on those who are unsaved uh, on, the one, on the one hand because uh, it has uh, become commonplace today to believe that there's no such thing as truth, there's no such thing as an absolute truth. And you know that is the current way that many think. When you extricate God from your culture, when you, when you diminish the, the veracity of Scripture, when you call into question whether or not God can um, give us His Word, that is, His real and actual Word and all of that, when, when that becomes uh, something that is more generally mocked than accepted, then you've undermined the, um, the foundation, we'll say, of, of, uh, of, of what truth actually is and how truth is to be uh, presented by the church, which Paul refers to as the repository of truth. We are, we are the ones whom God has given truth to, and we are supposed to safeguard that truth, and we're supposed to present that truth. So when you have the, the world who is mocking truth, and remember, the very first uh, one to ever question God's word was Satan himself, mm -hmm. when in the book of Genesis he asked Eve, as God said, so the originator of uh, argument against and resistance to truth is Satan himself, and, and uh, he's the one who energizes uh, the people of this age. And so that's why you need to be regenerated. That's why you need to be born again. That's why you need to have what would be referred to as the mind of Christ. You need to have, in other words, a, a, a new nature to receive those things that God has, has uh, given to us, and that 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 truth has been safeguarded in the church. And so when the church stops preaching the truth, when the pastors uh, stop presenting the gospel as it actually is, the very word of God, when the pastors no longer trust that it is, or when the pastors begin to look to culture to dictate what the message ought to be, or when they begin to look to the pseudosciences such as mm -hmm. psychology, which is not a science at all, uh, I, I was a behavioral science major, not that I graduated with a degree, I didn't, but I was a behavioral science major, and I still remember one of the first lectures in a secular college that I received by a certain well-known professor who said, if you're here in behavioral science, you need to understand there's no such thing. Now, that's what the professor said in a secular college. There's no such thing as behavioral science because science can be repeated. It's verifiable, and he began to speak concerning what made science science. He said, what this is, is the best guess that we can make mm -hmm. as it pertains to, uh, to human nature or what causes people to act in the way they do. And so, you know, we have given ourselves over to what uh, the Moody Blues, let me throw something, a blast from the past <laughs> called scientist priests, descended from the apes as scienti scientist priests all think. Will they save us in the end? We're trembling on the brink, right? <laughs> I mean, that was well known back in the 60s that you cannot trust uh, science that, that changes and all, and you cannot trust uh, the declarations of man that vacillate. And so you need something foundational. And for us as Christians, we know that the Word of God is truth. Jesus says, sanctify them in truth. Your Word is truth. And so the Word of God is obviously something you can depend on. So when the church stops preaching the truth, culture will. If a, if a father and mother do not teach their children who Jesus is, the world will teach them what Jesus isn't. That's how it works. And that's why we need to be, as pastors and teachers and servants of Christ, we need to be uh, well-versed in Scripture and we need to hold fast to it. So, yeah, culture has a way of undermining, of eroding foundations. But we stand on the sure word of God. And so if a pastor is not teaching the Bible, and here's something, John, that I, I really believe is, is true and to be, we ought to be aware of. There are many places that you can, you can see, even on TV or you know, on the radio or whatever in print, that aren't teaching the Bible. 
they'll open up the Bible and they'll begin to speak, but they're not teaching the Bible. They're teaching their own opinions. They're teaching what they think. They're teaching uh, ideas of man. And, and they may even read something from the Scripture, but they're not teaching the Bible. And I, can, I can, can't tell you how many times I've listened to someone who's speaking, and not like I'm a doctor of theology by any means, but I've, I've been in the Word for a long time, and, and, and I have the ability to discern truth from error. And when I hear some things that are being presented, and then to see the people getting so excited at what they're hearing, it's truly a, a tragic, tragic time in the church. So culture has a way of forming us. And like I was sharing recently, be ye not conformed to this world. Don't be pressed into the world's mold, but be ye transformed. And that comes through the renewing of our mind, and that comes through the Word of God. And we're just passing through. Well, at the end of the day, we need to realize that we're passing through. We, we pack lightly because the trip is short, and we shouldn't be carrying things that we don't need. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor David, for sharing that with us. I uh, want to do, uh, encourage you to come join us on our, for our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45 as you're taking us through Acts chapter 12. Yep. Verses 7 to, to remember. 7 to 25. Verse 7 to the conclusion. Conclusion of it. Great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come join us for worship, uh, getting into God's Word, and to fellowship afterwards. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you again, Pastor. Thank you guys for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you, and God bless you.